Hi guys, welcome to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago. I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. We're continuing with our philosophy glossary today. We're explaining all of those difficult concepts and isms that come up in philosophy. Today, I want to talk to you about contextualism about knowledge. Okay, so what is contextualism about knowledge? Well, I'm going to explain what it is by first of all explaining the problem that it's trying to solve. Okay, so here is a puzzle about knowledge. It's a puzzle about how can we possibly know anything at all? Here's how the puzzle goes. Knowledge seems to require that I rule out the possibility of me being wrong. Okay, it rules out the possibility of error. So if I'm thinking about whether it's raining or not outside right now, well, if I think, yeah, it could be either way, then I'm not going to say that I know that it's raining or that it's not raining. Okay, if I know that it's raining, then basically what I've done is I've ruled out the possibility, the epistemic possibility that it isn't raining, that I'm wrong. Okay, knowledge requires ruling out the possibility of error. That's what an awful lot of philosophers think, and it's very, very intuitive. However, here's the problem. Aren't there always possibilities of error floating around? Okay, think about literally anything that you might know. Well, you might be imagining it. You might be dreaming. You might be tricked by Descartes' evil demon. You might be a brain in a vat where an evil scientist is kind of feeding the nerve endings with a kind of a fake matrix-like reality. So maybe the world isn't at all like the way you think it is. There's always the possibility of error about literally anything. So if there's always a possibility of error and knowledge requires ruling them out, then you don't know anything. You don't know anything, at least about the external world. That's the puzzle about knowledge that contextualists try to solve. The idea of contextualism is that stuff depends on context. And in the case of contextualism about knowledge, the idea is that a knowledge ascription, that is when you say that person or me knows such and such. Whether that's true or not, so whether the person really knows or not, depends on the context in which you're making that ascription. And basically by context here, a good way of thinking about it is how high are the stakes? How important is it that we get the answer right? So let me give you an example that hopefully makes this idea a bit clearer. OK, so you're standing in a queue to get into the bank to do some transaction or other at the window. OK, it's getting close to five o'clock and you think that the bank is open at least till five o'clock. But maybe if pushed, you're not 100 percent sure. OK, but you're there and you kind of think it's till five. Should we say that, you know, the bank's open till five or not? Well, according to contextualists, there's kind of two ways this can go. One is it's super, super, super important that you get that payment in today. Like it's a it's a you know, you're setting up a mortgage or you're sending money across the world to somebody who really needs it right there, right now. So it's super, super important that you get into the bank today. OK, high stakes. The stakes are high. That's one case. The other case is where you're doing it because you happen to be passing. But if you do it today, if you do it tomorrow, it doesn't really matter. It's low stakes. It's not so important. So what the contextualist is going to say is whether you know or not that the bank closes at five kind of depends on whether we're in the high stakes or the low stakes case. That is the context that we're talking about when we're talking about contextualism. OK, in the high stakes case, the high stakes context, you're going to need a higher quality of evidence before we can say, yep, you definitely know that the bank is going to be open until five. But in the low stakes case, you, you don't need quite such high quality evidence. You might have a kind of a vague memory that the bank stays open till five, but you're not quite sure where you heard it. OK, so how does this relate to the idea of ruling out possibilities of error? Well, it kind of ties in like this. When we say ruling out the possibilities, we're not always thinking about absolutely every single possibility that you might think of. OK, we're kind of talking about the ones that are relevant or the ones that are contextually relevant. So let's forget about that bank case and just talk about another case of everyday knowledge. Do I know that I'm sitting in my attic with a camera in front of me kind of talking into a microphone? Well, as I'm thinking about it right now, yeah, I know that. I mean, that's just everyday knowledge. But then if we remember that we're thinking about like epistemology and Descartes and the evil demon and the possibility of dreaming, maybe I don't know it, right? Because those possibilities of error come back in. So in the first context where we're just talking about an everyday sense of knowledge, right? Do I know it? Yeah, I know it. 
those possibilities of error weren't there. But once we start thinking more philosophically about them, those possibilities of error come flooding back in. The context changes. The context in which we're talking philosophically and the possibilities of error are there, that's like the high stakes case in the bank case. It's where you have to have that higher quality of evidence. And, and perhaps in that case, we can't have a high enough quality of evidence when we're kind of thinking philosophically. Maybe then we don't really genuinely know much about the external world. But in the lower stakes case, where we're not thinking philosophically, we're just kind of saying, oh, you know, where are you right now? I'm sitting in my attic. Those possibilities of error, they're not there. They're just contextually irrelevant. They're not part of the context that we're in. So in that case, the low stakes case, we do know, I do know that I'm sitting in my attic. So what we've got here is a partial response to philosophical scepticism. So this allows us in an everyday kind of context, just kind of chatting about stuff to, to know stuff, right? I know where my car is. I know there's a camera that's on in front of me. So I should be saying interesting stuff and all that kind of thing. But we don't have to do some fancy kind of refuting the skeptic. Yep. All those skeptical possibilities are still there. I could be dreaming. I could be a brain in a vat. We don't kind of rule that out. We just say once we mention them, the context has changed from a context in which I know stuff to a context in which I don't know stuff. So the contextualist about knowledge kind of grants the skeptic her premise. Yep, could be a brain in a vat, all that kind of stuff. Can't rule it out, but still says in an everyday sense, you know plenty of stuff. So you kind of have your cake and eat it. So that's one reason why contextualism has been a very kind of popular move in epistemology over the last, I don't know, 30 years or so. There's a lot of technical detail going on there exactly in how the context comes into knowledge descriptions and whether it works and what the technical details look like. I'm not going to go into that. I just want to give you guys the kind of overview of what contextualists might say about knowledge. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. I think it's a really interesting topic. I hope you do too. If you want to go further into this, I can recommend you go and read David Lewis's paper, Elusive Knowledge. I think it's a wonderful philosophical paper about contextualism about knowledge. If you've got any questions about this, leave me a comment down below. I'm going to try to answer all of those questions. Thank you so much for watching this far. I really appreciate it. If you've got something out of this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon to get notifications, and I hope to see you guys back here soon. <laughs>